Hi. In today's episode of Psychoanalysis, Media, and Politics, I'm going to be looking at the question, is TikTok making people sick? So many of the ideas from this presentation come from my book, Freud for the 21st Century, where I try to show how Freud's work is still very relevant. In fact, maybe more relevant than ever before. So one thing first to look at is the evidence that TikTok, the online video source, causes tics. So we know from research that has been published by the National Library of Medicine um, that there's been a large increase in young females reporting nervous tics. And there's also an increase in hospital visits regarding Tourette's and tic-related issues. Um, often we found that families have no history of Tourette's syndrome. And often in classic Tourette's cases, there is a family history. We also know that many of the people reporting tics are avid watchers of TikTok videos and that on the site TikTok, um, the hashtag Tourette's uh, videos have over 4 billion views. So it's also important to note that most the most common tics reported are the ones that you often see on TikTok and they're not the most common ones classically reported. And often there's been shown a correlation of people reporting TikToks and also having a high level of anxiety, depression, and insomnia. So one thing we learned from psychoanalysis, and I think that only psychoanalysis can really help us understand, is that our thoughts can make us sick. And what Freud first discovered early on in his work is what he called hysteria, and he realized that a lot of his patients had physical problems, for instance, partial paralysis, that had no real biological or medical explanation. And so he wanted to figure out why people would make themselves sick. And one of the things that he discovered was that people often copy the symptoms of other people. And so one aspect of where um, that connects a site like TikTok to the production of tics in individual people is through a process of empathy and identification. Freud argued that there's a hysterical form of identification that he called the contagion. That is, he was trying to explain how certain mental disorders or symptoms can spread throughout a group. And the idea, once again, is like, we say, oh, laughter can be contagious or yawning can be contagious. But in reality, it's not a physical contagion. It is a mental identification and what Freud used the term empathy. And Freud also discovered that hysterical symptoms often have a real organic cause. Someone really will have some type of cough or they'll have some type of physical problem, but then this organic cause gets used in an unconscious way in order to accomplish certain mental goals. So one of the things that Freud talks about is the fact that our minds are often unintentional, indirect, and irrational. And he called this the primary processes. And so in the case of the formation of symptoms like tics, um, one thing that he discovered was this that the people who had the tics were not aware of why they had the tics or where the tics came from. And what Freud often found is underlying these symptoms was an unconditional desire for recognition, love, and knowledge from other people. And this is often called the transference demand. So people go to, say, therapy or analysis because they're searching for someone who will recognize their suffering, who will understand their suffering and care for them and help deliver them from the suffering. And so in the notion of transference, we have literally this idea of transferring responsibility uh, from the self to the other. And so one reason why people might present these physical symptoms that have no really physical causality is that they're searching for some type of reaction from other people. 
So if we want to see how TikTok itself works, something important to think about is the way that the AI, the artificial intelligence, presents new videos to the viewers based on what they've watched before. And so this creates this mirroring effect where particular interests, fears, and desires are reinforced and exaggerated through repetition. And it's also too important to know that the producers who gain a high number of views can often commodify and cash in on their high level of views. Um, and these videos are often very easy to produce and circulate. People just usually make videos on their phones. Um, and the way that they become addictive for many people is that they use the same principle that slot machines use, that they provide rewards on an inconsistent basis. And so people are watching more and more videos to see exactly what they want. And then the videos themselves help to shape what they desire. Um, and so this creates this endless scrolling and um, what some call binge watching, this idea that people can't stop themselves from watching these videos. So question remains is what are some possible interventions? Well, I think we need a better understanding of hysteria, anxiety, and addiction. And of course, I think that psychoanalysis is a good way of understanding these things. And there has been a recent call for more medication possible or related to tics and Tourette's and to um, disorders derived from social media and also cognitive behavioral therapy. But a lot of research shows that these forms of interventions often have a very limited short-term effect. And so I think that we need to find some way of incorporating psychoanalysis and presenting it to more people. Um, and so one reason for this is that we have to understand the role that tics play in the unconscious. Often they're used to escape feelings of guilt, shame, and anxiety. So we have to think about where do these feelings of guilt, shame, and anxiety come from? They often, the symptoms often are a form of both of enjoyment and suffering. So there's something masochistic about them. And often underlying, there's a desperate search for identity, meaning, and community. And we also often find that the people who are most vulnerable to these mental symptoms are often people who've experienced some level of exploitation or abuse or fear being exploited and abused. And we see this very strongly in Freud's case of Dora. So something that um, I think is very important to um, reinforce here is the notion that we have to use psychoanalysis in order to better understand these new forms of hysteria that are becoming enhanced through new technologies. Thank you.